now we need to control the doors. We need to move them up a set amount. So let's just take a door really quick. Let's use the pivot. And what we want to do is move that door vertically up. Now I know in F, if, if Five Nights at Freddy's, the door goes all the way out of shot, but I don't think I want it that far out of shot. So how far is that? That's 2.1 units up. So let's undo that really quick, 2.1 up. So let's create a vector, public vector, or even, it doesn't need to be a vector, float door height, which is gonna be equal to 2.1 to float. And we're going to transform that object by that amount whenever we want to move it up and down in the scene. Hit dot collider dot transform dot, oh, you know what? I don't want it to instantly move up. I want it to do it over time. I should really create a script to control the door's movement. Or I could create a coroutine that actually does it as well. Um, let's just do a coroutine. I enumerable enumerator uh, move door and uh, oh, I could do all kinds of things with bool states and figuring out whether or not it's open or closed uh, or I can just make move door dumb and have it take in a uh, float amount why not and the idea is I'll pass in the float and I'll multiply it by a negative one before I do it and that'll be both responsible for opening and closing the door. That way I only have one function to do it, so to speak. So obviously we're gonna need a yield return, and this is gonna be operating every frame. So I just can just do a yield return null. And let's do a for loop inside of this that the yield return is going to exist within. And what, let's see. I should also probably have a rate at which the, the door speed Let's do public float door speed is equal to pretty fast. I, I'm, well, let's just start with a meter per second for the moment. And then what I want to do is do amount, continue this while amount is greater than zero, right? What I can do is just do amount minus equals door speed times time dot delta time. No, but see if I negate this now, that's not gonna make sense, right? Because I'm gonna have a negative amount that I'm supposed to move. So that's not really what I wanna do here. This has to capture the, the total amount that I need to move regardless of direction. So maybe this will be just be easier if I f break this into two separate functions and have a move door and a uh, or an open door and closed door. And I no longer need this amount. And while the amount for closing the door, while the amount is greater than zero, continue. For the opening the door though, while the value is less than the door height, Continue. Float amount is going to be equal to the door height. And then float amount is equal once again to the door height, which is the travel distance for the object. Really, this line could be in here, couldn't it? Just wrap it up in a nice big for loop. Same thing right here. less than the door height, then add the speed times the time to that quantity, otherwise subtract it. And really, the last thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is once it finishes this, I'm probably going to want to make sure it is in the right position. So I'm just gonna to want to set the door to the right place. So this means I am going to need references to those doors. So let's do that as well. Let's do public game object actually I just need to transform let's do transform door left and public transform 
left over right. Uh, I will need to pass that information though in here so I know which door I'm handling. So let's do transform door left door and transform door. And let's modify door dot position plus equals door dot translate. I want, to, I want to translate this by a new vector 3. It's going to be 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, and it's going to be the y value that ends up being the amount. Copy this, paste that in there. This one, since I'm closing the door, I'm going to put a negative in the quantity. Now, I also don't want these coroutines to battle each other, so I should probably have some sort of a Boolean value that makes this not happen. So let's do public, not public, protected. Bool left door. Let's call it public bool uh, left door in use. Set these equal to false at first. Let's do the same thing for the right side. Down here, I'm going to want to make sure I set left door in use is equal to true. And in here, I'm going to want to do the right door is equal to true. And I'm going to want to launch those coroutines. And let's call uh, let's it start coroutine, the coroutine's name, as well as the parameter I want to pass in. So I want to do open door and close door. Now I need to, but before I can even do that, I need to know the state of the door, whether or not it's open or closed. So let's create a couple more bools for me. Protected bool left door open is equal to false, which I should make true. I should actually have the door start in an open state. We'll get to that later. Right now they are closed. First, let's see whether or not we're even allowed to do this, right? Because if we're not, if we're busy, we shouldn't do anything. Let's do if left door in use, if not left door in use, then we can do all this stuff. Otherwise, ignore it all. Scroll down. If right door in use, tab, save, tab over, great. Okay, now when you can start our coroutine, we're going to want to start, what is this? If left door open, we open it, else left door. Close. We don't even need the else, right? Uh, well, actually, maybe we do. Else, start coroutine. Otherwise, what we want to do is let's see if left door is open, closed door is what we want to call, and we want to pass to that um, the door we're dealing with, which is the left door. Door left flipped my convention there, that's annoying. I believe I need to use quotes when I'm dealing with this version. Let's just copy this really quick, paste that there. Let's do open door and copy this. Put it right there. Let's do right door open. Save both of those out and this one needs to be door right. Okay, uh, let's close this really quick. Uh, assign our references, so go to the use manager. Let's put our doors in there. So our doors, there's one door, whoops. Use manager, lock, grab that door. Oh, I did all oh, the names, all oh, the names. Okay, oh well. Which one's which? So that's the true left, and that is the right. Save that really quick, hit run.
Okay, so nothing's happening. Let's go ahead and check a few things. Go back into the manager and let's make sure things are happening. So in the console log, door control lefts were clicked. So that's right. Oh, I never set the door not to be in use as well. So inside of this function, when it completes, I do want to state uh, door after completion. Oh, that is a problem. Uh, uh, so by making this overly generic, now I actually do have a problem because I need to specify which door, I need to specify whether or not the door is in use. And that means I have to do an if check in here to test it. And I've just made my code much less generic. What I should really do is make the door itself responsible for responsible for doing all of this crap and uh, getting it out of this use manager function because the use manager is going to do a lot of other things. So let's just stop wasting our time and do that. Mm -hmm.